Hello friends, this is Scott, and I'm getting ready to go down to the hobby farm again. And this trip is all about planting a couple shade trees, mulching them in with some of that good mulch I got from the tree service. And I'm going to stretch some fans, I think, is what I'm going to try to accomplish. And here I made a dent. I've, got, I've been taking some of this to the school garden, and that'll be a future video. Got lots more to do, so that'll be uh, next week's project. Well, got down to the hobby farm and planted two trees in the past year. And they're for shade. And uh, it'll take a bunch of years, and maybe I'm planting them for the next generation to enjoy, but got to start somewhere. So that one over there is called an alley elm. You can see it kind of all the way in the background. There's the sprinklers are going. And the other one is a Norwegian sunset maple. So here's the elm tree. And kind of get a view from the backyard. You can see where the neighbor's uh, sprinklers are hitting uh, into my our pasture and uh, definitely watering good. So this tree will not be lacking of water. So that's good. The other side, not so sure. Uh, the maple, I'm going to have to really keep an eye on that one. As you can see, the Norwegian uh, sunset maple as I'm walking toward it. The pasture is starting to green up a little bit. I've been dragging a hose around, uh, but watering once a week isn't going to do it. But when I get animals on here and then I uh, water more frequently and start getting some more seed load in the, in the soil and some more fertility, this pasture will green back up. But it looks like a pretty good job. I will be putting some cages around here. You'll see it toward the end of the video just to keep the deer away so they don't... Uh, or the sheep or whatever I put in here so they don't eat my trees. But the uh, place is starting to come together. And I'm starting to like the, the like the looks. I've got still got lots of pocket gophers to take care of. I tried to catch a couple this trip and was unsuccessful. So I'll be at it until I'm successful. So that's just uh, just what you have to do. I don't want to use gases or poison. I don't, I don't like that. So I'll just trap them. And uh, if it takes time, it takes time. But after I planted the trees, it's time for fence. And I've never stretched fence before. And I was so sure I bought the right fence, uh, and I didn't. I bought welded wire fence, which is fine for this part of the yard because this will not be a, a livestock area. Yeah, there'll be some chickens in here, but they're not gonna do anything to the fence. But big livestock and welded wire with, are not a good combination. But I had two rolls, so I decided, I had two 50-foot rolls, I decided to use them. For this part, and I was going to finish the uh, pasture fence, but I'm not going to use this material there. I'll have to go buy some more and actually get the right stuff. But here's how you stretch fence. There's a come along, and I've got a little toe strap onto my truck. And the come along had a pretty long uh, lead there, so I'm quite a ways away. But I just gently pull it tight, crank it a couple times with the come along, and the fence is up. And all I have to do now is, I didn't show this part, but... I had some wire clips that go to T-posts and they wouldn't work on these round posts. So I just had to you know, cut wire and, and uh, into about a foot long strips and then just twist uh, the wire to the fence post. But it turned out pretty good. It worked, you know, pretty much as YouTube ta taught me. Uh, again, I'm a YouTube uh, fan as well as, a, <laughs> as a, a person making YouTube videos. So I learned a lot from YouTube. But first night, Again, I got down there Friday night, and I got this, got the trees planted, and I got all this fence up. And I still have a couple posts that are a little taller, so I'm going to cut those down with a grinder and uh, just to make everything more uniform, but not a rush. Now, I had to cut at the corner because uh, my rolls weren't big enough or long enough, so I had to stretch an independent roll to start at the front. And this is how far I got the first day. So I got everything done except for this little section. So that'll be uh, Saturday morning's project, or Saturday whenever I get out of bed, because it, it was hot and I'm tired. So, but so far so good. It looks looks like it's going to do the job. Now I get up Saturday morning and I'm going to take another quick look here and make sure that everything looks okay. And and uh, you can start to see the wire a little bit. Uh, it's hard to see. It's such a clear wire, but that's what the city prefers here. They like to. They don't like things. Uh, anything that's going to block the view of the street and. But I'll plant a lot of bushes here, so I'll be blocking the view to the street uh, with vegetation. So the dumpster was supposed to come this week, and it, I'm on a waiting list. So uh, what I thought I was going to do, I didn't get a chance to. So hopefully next week I'll get the dumpster. But here's after I got the last section on this side done. And I'll just do another scroll around. and A little redundant, but uh, I'm kind of pleased with it. 
Again, I had never stretched fence before. I had a nice uh, fence stretcher that the previous owner had here on the property. I was going to make one out of some two by fours and just some carriage bolts, but that fence stretcher worked really, really well. So, so I'll use it again when I finish up uh, these couple little sections on the pasture fence. But the yard is, or the, the entire property is totally perimeter fenced. There's some places where animals can still get out. I need to move some dirt around and level some things out, but, but overall, at least we're, uh, perimeter fenced in. I did put the cages on the trees. I just had, I only had four T posts left. So I just did two per tree. I may make them bigger. We'll see what the, what, what the animals try to do to these trees. The cows next door, uh, the beefy brothers were sure interested in this tree over here. So, uh, we'll see if they break through the fence and try to eat my tree, but, but here's the two sections I've got left to do. And they're only about 25 total feet. Now here it's got barbed wire on the existing fence on the top layer. But this is a woven wire. That's what I thought I was buying, and I have no idea how I bought welded wire because I knew what I was wanted to get when I went there, and I just I don't have a clue why I got welded wire. But it is what it is, and uh, it'll work fine for where I did install it. But I didn't want to put it here because it'll just get destroyed by animals. So, so this little section here is the other side, and I'll stretch some barbed wire on top. And again, this side here should be replaced, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. But here's a scan into the trees, and you can see the that's the elm. That's the Allie elm, so it's named after my uh, future daughter-in-law. Uh, her name is Allie, and it just happened to be that was the only elm tree they sold. So it's a, she'll, she's now part of Fountain Green. And here's the big pile of crap that i got to get rid of this week, hopefully, if the dumpster comes. and But at least we're fenced in, so we're getting there. Again, another hot weekend, not nearly as hot it was. It's probably 20 degrees cooler, but it was still in the mid-80s, so... But here's the maple, and there's the elm. So we're making progress, and we'll just keep on swimming. Well, thanks for watching this video, and uh, next up, hopefully it'll be a video on the school garden, and then we'll show some trash being uh, thrown away down at the hobby farm. Well, thanks for watching and subscribing. I appreciate you.